Life beyond the grave. Exactly what happens when we die? Well, that's a question humans have been asking since the beginning of time. And Kay Arthur knows where to find the answers. Kay Arthur has been teaching the Bible for almost 50 years, with over 100 books in 70 different languages. Daily radio, television, and online programs, and a global ministry, she's helped countless people discover the truth of God's Word for themselves. We have people that have no concept of sin, no understanding of sin, but you and I understand it because we understand the Word of God and we've got to be willing to share the Word of God with them. In her new book, Heaven, Hell, and Life After Death, she teaches about what happens after we die. Please welcome back to the 700 Club a dear friend, Kay Arthur. What fun to start the day with you. <laughs> well, I, you know that I love you. We go way, we way back. Do. Back to before you adopted all those children yeah. and everything. And I, I was at Pat's birthday party, yes. as you know. It was, I was so blessed. I was so blessed by that man and the legacy of CBN and, and seeing uh, people that believe God. Yes. I mean, just take him at his word and listen to his spirit. And the history of what happens yeah. when even one person does right. that and means it. Right. I want to talk about that a little bit because you have loved the word of God and have broken it open and passed out the bread to all of the rest of us for years. You and your husband, Jack, started Precept Ministries quite a while ago, and it's been touching the lives of people since then. How did yep. you get started? <laughs> well, uh, I was married. I was divorced. I was immoral. I got saved. I told God I'd go back to my husband. My husband committed suicide. Yeah. Uh, I went to Bible school, and I, uh, uh, God just told me I was going to marry Jack. Married him, went to the mission field three and a half years, became ill with a heart condition, had to come home. and But it was on the mission field that God shut me up with him, yeah. you know, for like three and a half years, kind of like, uh, not mm -hmm. like Paul, but you know, yes, I was shut right. up with the word yes. and teaching the word to, uh, to teenagers that I was leading to Christ. And, and I just found out, Terry, I, I love the verse in Psalm 119. I have not turned aside from your ordinances, mm -hmm. for you yourself have taught me. Yeah. And, and just, just studying the word. There's 66 books. He expects us to know 66 books. And it's all there. It's free. Most of us have more than one Bible. And yet today we are so biblically ignorant. Okay, that must be I think so that's frustrating why, to someone like you. I think like that you. that's why America is in the condition it is in. Yes. And I think that's why, in a sense, we're gutless and we're politically correct, and we back down on, on the precepts of God, and you cannot do that. I think a lot of people, death, we, we're surrounded by death. We hear about it all the time on television. And, you know, I was just praying today as we were praying uh, back in the green room. People, you know, they're committing suicide. Yeah. They don't know that yeah. that's not the end. Yeah. And if they do not know Jesus, and I'm talking about a relationship with Jesus that is not from walking down the aisle mm -hmm. or praying a prayer, but that actually changes your life, yeah. they don't know they're going to live forever. Yeah. They don't know what Isaiah 66 says, you know, about how in eternity they're going to go and they're going to look over into the lake of fire. Yeah. And they're going to see these people that, that rejected the one way that they could get to heaven, and that was through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Talk a little bit about what happens after we die. I mean, all the things that yes. you just talked about, but what about when a believer dies? What happens to a believer? Let's go through some scenarios. I'm here. so glad you asked this. We work in 184 countries, 70 languages in wow. Muslim countries. We just had some people that were killed. So what happened to them? They were killed by the Taliban because they would not stop studying and teaching and, and explaining the Word of God. So what happens to them? Well, Paul tells us in Philippians that, that he's torn between two options, one to stay and remain and minister and the other to go and be with the Lord. Because he says, when I'm with the Lord, I'm absent from the body, but I'm present with the Lord, and that is far better. Yeah. 
and and Paul says, can I can I just read Please. this to you? Because I, I want you to know we hear so much about death. We hear so much about dying, but we usually hear it from the aspect of experience. Mm -hmm. But the experiences vary. Yes. You know, but God tells us in his word everything that we need to know that pertains to life and godliness and eternity. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says, we know that if this earthly tent is torn down, we have a body prepared for us. We're not going to be floating on clouds like right. I thought. And then he says... Um, he says, uh, being of good courage, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, if death is me being in the presence of the Lord, yeah. I mean, what is this life? I mean, it's all temporal. It's, it's full of pain and sorrow and suffering. And all of that pain and sorrow and suffering that we go through is to equip us to see yes. Jesus, to stand. Paul says, I bear in my body the mm -hmm. brand marks of Jesus Christ. I just finished writing a precept course, which is our Rolls Royce of Bible studies on Galatians. Yeah. But he mentions that I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Well, can you imagine stepping into eternity and seeing Jesus? Yeah. And, and not only that, but seeing him and not being ashamed, yeah. not being ashamed because we realize that judgment does come yes. after death, even for the Christian. So I think the two big questions, I want to talk to you about that, but yeah. the two big questions people have is, what about the person who never heard the word, who never, no one ever told about Jesus? The Bible tells us in Romans 1 that we are without excuse. Yeah. So we have to believe God. And he tells us that in innately, we know that there's a God. They have never found a, a people group on the face of this earth that don't worship some sort of a God. And strangely enough, recognize there needs to be a sacrifice. Exactly. I mean, exactly. isn't that fascinating? Yes, yes. And an appeasement of that yeah. God because something is, is, uh, is wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, God's not going to lose any of his own. And this is the thing that gives me, I am his messenger and I give the message all yeah. sorts of places, hear all sorts of exciting stories from giving the message, but I give the message, but I'm not the savior. Yeah. And so since God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, if we're crying for him, if, if you're seeking for him, precious one, if, if that is your heart's desire, then you cry to God and God will move heaven yeah. and earth and do whatever is necessary to bring you to the knowledge of Jesus. So what do you say? Because there's no other way. There isn't another mm -mm. way. What do you say to people who reject that and who say, how could a loving God send anyone to hell? Well, I think that that's because we are walking by our imagination. I, I looked at the interviews from the Drugger family last mm -hmm. night, and, and you just see all these people, and, and, and they're clamoring against all of this. Their thinking is skewed. It is. You know, the God of this world has blinded their eyes. So what we have to see is, look, I read the Word. This is what I learn about God. I know God never changes. I know he's, uh, he's the same yesterday, today, forever. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He is the sovereign God, and yeah. he will do what is necessary. There will never be anybody in hell who said, I wanted God, yes. but he didn't give himself to me, or he did not reveal himself yeah. to me. Choice. It's a choice. All about choice. And the choice. thing, all these people that are committing suicide don't realize What's awaiting them? I would tell them, go read Luke 16. Mm -hmm. It's a story that Jesus told. And you see that there are two destinations, you know, when you die. And read the end of Isaiah. Read Isaiah 65. You were you doing that thing on Israel today yes. and how God's going to bring them back. And yeah. that leads right into life after death. And that's what your latest book, Heaven, Hell, and Life After Death is about. And I just want to say to all of you, uh, you know, this is a subject, it's going to impact you one way or the other. If you've got questions about it, K. Arthur's six-week, no homework, 
Bible, all Bible study, all, all Bible. Bible, is called Heaven, mm -hmm. Hell, and Life After Death. This is available nationwide. Thank you for what you always bring so richly to all of us who are hungry. You're a gift. Oh, I, I love it. Thank You're you. A gift.